Welcome, 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 everybody. Good morning. Thank you for dragging yourselves out to see us kick things off. We're the Griffith team. I'm James. This is Alex, Liam, and Brittany. Now, we are two parts social marketers, that's Alex and myself, and two parts behavioral economists, and that's Brittany and Liam beside me. Now, we think these two areas have really altered the way that we see this problem, and the problem specifically regards to Courtlink. We saw this program as great potential to help people, but also great potential for improvement. So our motto for this project has been reiteration rather than iteration. What we're going to propose to you is something that we really think we can take, run, and improve moving forward. So with that in mind, how we're going to present this to you, the brief, in brief, frame the problem, how it's seen through our eyes, what behaviours we're targeting and for what outcomes, the meat in the sandwich, the proposed nudge is what you're all here for, the evaluation, quick, briefly, how we think we can measure this, and then some short recommendations moving forward. So with that in mind, I'm going to pass you to Alex to give you some context behind the problem. So we know the court link process is quite complicated. So what we did is we decided out to map out the whole process from start to finish. We realized that there was two areas that we could actually put in our nudges. And we wanted to actually frame it underneath the transferatical model stages of change from pre-contemplation to maintenance. Now, the main area that we sort of focus off to begin with with referrals post triage is we're going to create a um, SMS communication. We're going to do brochure redesign, right, to move the um, people from going from pre contemplation to contemplation. For the second series of nudges, we are going to look into making sure that our, the people within the court link program actually stay in the program right, for as long as they possibly can. Um, so we're going to have a reten two retention nudges in the forms of a progress book and also another SMS communication mechanic. Now, just to quickly frame it, um, the current program is obviously failed to enroll in the program and also a failure to complete the program. We want, with these nudges, we want to move to desired behavioral outcomes, right? We want higher program enrollments. We want them to stay as long as they possibly can through um, no, it's a higher program enrollments, right? For SMS communication and brochure redesign and also a higher retention rate for a progress book and targeted communications. Now I want to pass on to uh, Brittany to explain. Thank you, Alex. So our first nudge involves redesigning the brochure and ensuring it gets into the hands of all of our potential candidates. So as we've surely all seen by now, the current brochure is a startling red um, and contains an overwhelming amount of text, which leads to cognitive overload. To counter this, we have designed a more attractive and easy to absorb prototype, as you can see above. For inside the brochure, we propose reformatting the information in an infographic style, which will assist Courtlink operators and legal aid in clarifying the purpose and benefits of Courtlink to potential participants. Unfortunately, due to the time constraints, we didn't have the ability to create this infographic, but essentially this brochure redesign should improve the rate of potential participants to go through triage. On the outside, you can see, first of all, that we have toned down the harsh red, and added a welcoming brand to the Courtlink program to the front of the brochure. While the new colour scheme will provide a calming effect, it may also address an individual's tendency for salience. The use of testimonials is key, however, to help socially normalise the program. Showing a success story of a previous Courtlink participant, but also adding the individual story in the progress. The old brochure will be easy to phase out, however, positioning the new brochure is key to its effectiveness. It will be useful when educating individuals about their potential in the program and can be provided to take home with them. This nudge is meant to effectively support the decision-making process for those individuals already considering the program. But what if they don't volunteer after being given a referral? Well, that's where the second nudge comes in. So the second nudge will be the introduction of an SMS text messaging service to increase Thank you, Alex. Increase referrals from those who have declined entering the program following triage assessment. Triage can be a difficult moment and there is potential that the individual in any given case has suffered from self-control bias, wherein they are seeking an easy exit from the interaction, rather than focusing on the long-term benefit proposed by Courtlink. Here you can see an example of what an SMS text message will look like and how it relates to the EAST framework. So the design we've taken is that the literacy of the recipients may not be particularly high. So we've used clear language that is to the point and that was an essential process. 
Personalising the message in an informal and approachable tone made it more attractive and establishes a relationship between the potential participant and case officer addressing the social component. Taking into consideration that they will be overwhelmed and prone to irrational decision making at the time, the text message will be delayed to send 48 hours from the time of triage. This is appealing to the cooling off effect where the potential participant has settled down and may be more open to information. I now pass you over to Liam. Uh, thank you, Brittany. So our next nudge involves a text message sort of retention service. So it's going to be a default when they first enter the program. They are free to opt out if they wish. And it's attractive because as you can see on the text message, it contains their name as well as the case officer's name. This is also trying to appeal to more of a social aspect. And we also want to include a message that's quite relevant to them. In our example, um, we're using the example of coming to meetings is the best way to help you no matter what. So if they're going to have a tough week, um, we want to incentivize them coming. And finally, this will be given to them at about uh, 48 hours before they're due to come in. This is so that if there's any uh, cognitive limitations um, and they forget, then hopefully this will remind them. And our final nudge today is a progress book. So this will be a default as well. Um, so they can opt out if they wish. Um, the, uh, what is it, attractive, yep. So this will also contain um, messages inside it which contains the opportunity cost of not showing up to the course. So we want them, so we want them to sign underneath it as well, which will hopefully create a commitment device. And on each page that gets uh, stamped every week, they will have a message underneath it from people who have finished the program. And hopefully these messages will help um, make them not feel so alone in the program. And finally, getting that stamp every week appeals to their present bias. So instead of having a 12-week stretch, it just comes down to every week, just come in, and they're getting that gratification every week. Now on to James. So in terms of evaluation and recommendations, we split this into something of a short-term, long-term. Now short-term, simply put, we want to look at frequencies. If we've got people coming back in through a text messaging program, we want to see if more people changed their minds and came back in than didn't as a result of that text message at the beginning. And we also, in terms of retention, what we're really interested in is not whether or not they complete the program, it's how many weeks they spend in the program to utilize as much as possible. And can we increase the amount of weeks on average they spend with our nudge version of the program versus a program as usual? Long term, however, we see this as requiring a great deal of something called segmentation. We need to know the differences between the people in this program, the who's who of the successes and the admitted failures of this program. And I think that largely depends on this recidivism data that's not available until that two-year mark that we heard yesterday in the panel session. Essentially, though, with that recidivism data, what we can do is compare the nudge version versus the no-nudge program as usual over time. Thank you.